Hi, welcome back to the garden. Today is Friday, July 15th. It's 101 degrees out here this evening and we're in survival mode. Normally I'd clip these off, but I'm gonna show you why we're just in survival mode, not panic mode. The soil's not sopping wet, but that soil is moist. And this is a very thin area of mulch. That's why we're in survival mode. We're gonna go ahead and continue to build this up right here by these sweet potatoes. Most of the rest of the garden's mulched out pretty well. Now normally on Fridays we plant, but we're under water restrictions and it's gonna get to 109 in a couple days. We're gonna make sure this garden survives. So I'm gonna talk about mulch and how that benefits you. Now how is a fork full of hay going to help me in a drought? How's a pile of wood chips going to help me in a drought? Hay, straw, leaves, wood chips, sawdust, grass off your lawn. How does that help you in a drought? Two things. Keeps the soil covered, keeps the temperature moderated. All of these things act exactly like the insulation in your house. It creates sort of an air barrier, keeps the soil cooler, and if you can keep those roots cool, the leaves can take the sun. It also prevents the ground from evaporating all that water all that quickly. In a deep mulch, no-till, living soil garden, the roots go deep and the biology in the ground also helps the plants. Tomorrow is my watering day. We've got buckets that we filled up yesterday morning. Tomorrow morning, I will take the buckets and I'll water everything that looks like it needs it. Add a little more water underneath the fresh mulch I'm putting down. And then we'll go ahead and fill up all the buckets again, let the chlorine dissipate, and we'll repeat that process. But with the deep mulch, I don't have to come out here, put sprinklers, and run them for 24 hours. And we don't water every plant every time. They don't need it. I mean, you can see what the garden's doing. I do have a couple thin spots that we want to cover tonight. But you can do this too. If your soil's uncovered, but this isn't soil. This is crushed up leaves that came out of the trench we planted. Dig down just a little bit, and that's wet. Now we are gonna water with the can, the brand new stuff we just planted, because they're young, they need a little extra help. But then our strategy is to add some more mulch to hold this moisture in. The new stuff you plant, I suggest you water those every day, especially in the heat. The more mature plants can take it, then you need to water your more mature plants as you see fit. But if you're under some kind of restriction or a severe drought, this strategy will work for you too. And when I planted them, I told you once they got up a little ways, we were going to go ahead and mulch around them. And we started to do that. Go ahead and finish that up. And that will help hold that moisture in. And actually, now we've met up where we mulched the other day. Now back in here, it's a little thin, so we'll put this on heavy. The trick is to keep all the soil about the same temperature. So you wanna have a decent covering over your whole garden, as much as you can. Now the thicker you can put it down, the more moisture you're gonna be able to retain. We are definitely in survival mode here. We got a bunch of baby beets. We got some baby corn. Some more baby beets. More baby corn. Has anybody ever said you can't have enough beets? and a bunch of carrots. But as hot as it's gonna be,
I'm just going to turn that over and let that shade them. I don't want to push them down onto the ground, but I don't want the sun beating down on them. All right, now these, the young ones, I'm going to water these every day with the can. We've got enough water set aside to do that. But now that we're in survival mode, we've got to take a look at something else. So far, the cedar chips help to squash out up front. But right here, there's a hole. I know that bug's up in here. I don't want to slice this, and there's quite a bit of this squash already touching the ground. So I'm just going to cover this in deep mulch like I did the rest of that. With any luck, that'll plug that up, and where this is touching, it'll continue to draw moisture. But I'm going to give it a decent little drink, and then we're going to bury it in mulch. Now you always want to bring your clippers out because you may have to harvest sooner than you want to. All right, so let's cover that hole up in the whole base of this. And I'm just putting it down deep to see if we can't help it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this bucket because this plant's going to need all the moisture it can. That'll be down in here all nice and moist and hopefully cutting off the air to that vine bore. I think I'd kill the plant completely if I tried to do surgery on it. So this is my solution. We'll see what we get. Our second planting of squash has started to sprout. In these cells, they get plenty of water and they're going to acclimate to this heat. So whether or not it breaks in a couple of weeks, they'll be ready to come out here to the garden. And I've been eating these every day. Well, that reminds me. Let's go take a look how we're going to survive this drought. We got ourselves a baby beet I just pulled out from under the tomatoes. Tomatoes. Hang on. Let's make a little pile. All right, we got our tomatoes. We got our big leaf basil. We're gonna make us a little sandwich out here in the garden. We're gonna, gonna grab a couple tomatoes. Get that mulch off of there. Don't necessarily want to be eating cedar chips. All right, we got a couple tomatoes. Let's go ahead and put our blackberries on there. Let's put a beet. You take the root end off. Got one good leaf left on it. You know why beets taste like dirt? Because you pull them right out of the dirt. But these taste like sugar. And this is what I'm going to have for a snack. Don't get me wrong. In a survival situation, you do need to be proactive. Some of the tips that I've showed you here will help you. Our tomatoes are even helping us out. The curly leaf. That's not a disease, they're just saving water. When it gets dark, they'll go ahead and flatten back out. And you remember how we planted these. We pruned them up quite a bit and planted them deep. So those roots are good and deep. They've been mulched around. I think they're gonna be just fine. Some of the other tips and tricks I've shown you will help you save water, will help you moderate the temperature of the soil, which will keep the roots alive, which will keep your plants happy. You can do this too. And then you can come out, instead of being panicked, you can have a basil, tomato, raspberry, beet. <laughs> that is good. That is good. Oh. A little juicy. I want to thank you for stopping by and helping me put out some more mulch. Get ready for the real hot weather. You have the sweetness of the blackberries. You have the sweetness of the tomatoes and the sweetness of the beets, but they're all different sweetnesses. And then you have the basil. Mmm. That's why we do it is because it tastes great. I do want to thank you for stopping by and spending a few minutes with us. And remember, until next time, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.